Victoria and I are so shattered we can hardly move but it is still tight to get Victoria in on her first 100 miler inside the cutoff. Not content with running three marathons in three weeks in three different countries last month, this month my wife Victoria decided that now would be a great time to run her first 100 mile race. So, having volunteered at the event last year, we rocked up at the start of the 2023 Centurion Thames Path 100. So it's a hive of activity in the town hall here at Richmond. It is drizzling, but it's not absolutely pouring with rain. There's two bag drops and a bag at the finish, so they go in these trucks here. It's a beautiful location for the start. Uh, it's even nicer when it's sunny. <laughs> Thank you, cheers, thank you. Right, that's my finish line bag dropped off. Uh, Victoria's got two drop bags for along the way as well, so I've got a little bit of stuff in there. Some 340 runners towed the start line, hoping to make it to Oxford within 28 hours. So we're at the start line of the Thames Path 100 for Victoria's very first 100 mile race. Let's see if we can get her through it. We're aiming for around about 24 hours, but we'll just see what happens. We're not bothered as long as we get in under the cutoff. And we're here today with Ola Dance, who provided us with two sets of their wireless over ear earphones, which we're gonna to use to communicate with each other if we get separated. And we're gonna test out how long the battery lasts because these earphones apparently have a 16 hour battery life. So a 100 mile race is gonna really test their metal. Huge thanks to Ola Dance for sponsoring today's video. Look who's back after about 3 billion years of injury. <laughs> But we won't be running with and Richard. He's going a little bit ahead of us. It was great to have Richard back and to see so many usual suspects and new faces in the crowd. This is David's first 100 as well as Victoria's. It 100. is. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, first one, yeah. 100. <laughs> there are loads of people here today with their first one. Anyone else with their first 100? Here we go. Thames Pass 100 with Ola Dance and uh, we are off on the Thames Path at Richmond in the rain. Let's see how long these headphones last then with their 16 hour battery life. Currently listening to the radio. I don't know, I should be listening to some inspirational dance music or something, shouldn't I? The Thames Path 100 is notorious for people going off too fast in the opening miles. And yet, we were still surprised to find ourselves near the back of the field early on, because our pace was also faster than it should have been. So this is Kingston in the rain. And uh, we are about ooh, 7k in, which is four and a half miles or so, just crossing over the bridge heading towards Hampton Court Palace. Just under 12 kilometres in, and here is, there's Hampton Court Palace, or the rear of it anyway, and the gardens. One hour, 32 minutes in to the Thames Path 100, feeling nice and comfortable. So we've just been to the first aid station. We were so concentrated on getting food <laughs> that uh, I didn't get the camera out. Um, but, but we had Marmite and cheese. We had Marmite and cheese sandwiches. I've got some peanut butter sandwiches, a packet of crisps as well. So that'll do us until the next aid station, which is about 11 miles from here. And uh, we, are, we are adopting a very, very disciplined uh, walk-run strategy. One thing I keep worrying about is these Ola Dance headphones, because they're so light. Like, I, I keep thinking I'm not wearing them, and then I go to touch them and they're there, even though they're light. And, uh, and very comfortable. Well, so comfortable you can't feel them. They, they're not budging and I can feel mine. Mine aren't really budging, so it's good. The drizzle at the start had turned to full on rain by now. Thankfully, the Oladance earphones are not only sweatproof, but waterproof to IPX4 standards. Here in California. From California. <laughs> First time doing the Thames Path 100. Yeah. You enjoying it? Yep. Despite the rain, Victoria was comfortable and relaxed in the early miles. We are 30 kilometres into the Thames Path 100. That's taken us four hours and 12 minutes. And uh, 
we came across an ice cream van <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we kind of couldn't resist. It's so. not really the weather for ice cream, but hey ho. So there we are, we're having an ice cream. It's very easy to get carried away on a flat route when your legs feel fresh. We tried to remain disciplined, sticking to our run-walk strategy as we made our way through Walton-on-Thames, past the lock gates at Sudbury and Belweir, and on towards Runnymede, site of the signing of the Magna Carta, before arriving at the second aid station at Raysbury. Right, 36k, five hours, and we're arriving at Raysbury aid station, which is aid station number two. So, let's have some sandwiches. Right, because we've arrived quite late in the day, all the gannets, of course, have been here already. So there's not an awful lot remaining, but we've had our fill and we're on our way. That's Kerry. What's your name? Kerry and Helen. Thank you very much, guys. See you. So let's go. Let's carry on. Whilst the boats and the river water itself journeyed past iconic landmarks in our country's history, our proximity to Heathrow Airport reminded me that we're all heading somewhere, but it's how and why we choose to travel that makes life different and interesting. It's raining. Six and a half hours into the Thames Path 100. We're arriving now in a very important town today because uh, this is Windsor and it's the coronation of the king. There's, look, there's, there's Windsor Castle right there. So uh, it's, a, it's unfortunate that it's pouring with rain, but I've been listening on my uh, Ola Dance earphones to the coronation on the radio. And uh, yeah, so it feels kind of like we're a little bit in, in a bit of royal territory now that we're in Windsor. So the bells are ringing out for the coronation of the king. Windsor Castle behind me here. We're heading towards Eton as well. Eton College, very famous private school. Whatever your feelings about the monarchy, there's no denying the palpable sense of history chaptered by the reigns of our various kings and queens that running along the Thames path can elicit. What's really good about the Ola dance uh, sometimes is uh, invariably Victoria wants to talk to me and if I've got the radio on or the music on, <laughs> I can't hear her. So what you do to change the volume is dead easy. You just swipe down like that to turn the volume down and then swipe your finger up like that to turn the volume back up. So we're 47 kilometres into the Thames Path 100. We've been running for six hours and 40 minutes. We are, I mean, we are pretty much at the back of the pack, but we're slowly, over the next 60 miles, going to pick our way through. And uh, hopefully we won't be at the back by the time we've finished. Isn't that right, Victoria? Hopefully. We arrived at Dorney Aid Station, where we volunteered last year, feeling pretty good after 30 miles. We were both eating well, and we were pleased to learn that we weren't right at the back. It's very pleasant, isn't it? There were about five runners behind us on the course, and we noted one or two who had been ahead of us had dropped from the race at Dorney. The rain was still falling, but the ground underfoot was holding up, with only a few muddy puddles to avoid. We made our way past the decadent properties on the other side of the river and on towards Maidenhead and a reunion with what has become arguably my favourite road name. Nearly 58 kilometres into the Thames Path 100 and uh, for the purists among you... It's Derrick Road. For we love Derrick Road. Anyway, we're 8 hours and 19 minutes in. And uh, yeah, we've covered nearly 58 kilometers waiting for the next aid station. This is Maidenhead we're in now. Uh, Victoria is a little bit further up ahead, actually. So um, actually, while she is, because I can't see her, uh, let's see if we can give her a ring with, uh, with the Ola Dan's headphones. Hey Siri, call Victoria. See if this works. It is ringing. It's ringing. It's actually ringing. I don't know if you I can't make you hear it. But she's not answering. Oh, she. Hello. I'm calling you. I'm calling you on the headphones. I, I can actually see you. You're about. Uh, she's about 200 meters ahead of me. <laughs> I just thought I'd call to see if it works. Yeah, no, it works fine. 
All right, I'll catch you up in a second. By 6 p.m., the king had been crowned and the rain had finally abated. So, just arriving at Cookham aid station. I think it's Cookham, 40 miles. I was still managing to stuff my face with sandwiches, peanuts and crisps. However, Victoria was starting to go off her food and was beginning to feel nauseous and more fatigued than she felt she should be at under halfway. Nearly 68 kilometres into the Thames Path 100. Darkness is not far away. Have you seen some of the houses on the other side of the river? Psychologically, this is a tough stage for many people in a 100 miler. You've run quite a long way already, but you're not even halfway there. That can play on your mind, and when it's your first 100, you simply have no reference for how you're feeling. You've no experience of fighting through that negativity and coming out of the other side. But what we have learned over the ultra runs that Victoria has done is that she does have a head for these things, and I was confident that she could pull through. Right, we're 11 hours and 13 minutes into the Thames Path 100 and uh, the Oladance headphones are still going strong. Uh, we are both in the pain cave a little bit now. We're 76 kilometres in. Uh, we're starting to feel it quite a bit. The light is going. We're going to head into the dark and this is where it gets a bit tough. So both Victoria and I have put the music on to just kind of drown out any other thoughts and just focus on the music and focus on keeping moving forward. What are you listening to, Victoria? What are you listening to? Oh, um, ACDC. Okay, it's safe to say that Victoria and me have completely different music tastes. I am not listening to ACDC. So yeah, a long way to go still, and uh, we are hurting now, so we just need to plod on. Darkness fell just before we reached halfway, and we had our head torches on by the time we arrived at Henley, where we could pick up our first drop bag at around 51 miles into the race. Victoria had packed some dry clothes, and we both had some extra drinks. We need the battery charger, I think. Yeah, we need the battery charger and cable for, the, um, for your phone and for the camera. Victoria said she felt terrible. Fair enough. Still smiling. Still smiling though. though. Yeah. yeah, still making You've got jokes. That, that jovial spirit. In you. I know. Make it, make it down the road. Okay, this is Henley Aid Station. So this is over halfway now. Uh, we have 79 kilometres left. We've done 82 and a bit, 83. Uh, the Ola Dance headphones are still working. <laughs> They're still working after 12 hours and 35 minutes. So still going. Um, I've got coffee and pasta. And Victoria is just checking her feet. She's over there. Um, she's just checking her feet because she's got a blister. She's also feeling a bit sick, so um, we're wondering uh, if she might throw up at some point. Um, and we've both got something to eat, something to drink. Just rest here for five or ten minutes and then we'll get on our way again. It's important to try and stick to a time limit at these stops, or once you sit down, you could be there forever. Right, that is Henley done. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be there. We made our way through the darkness to the next aid station. Oh. All right. How are we? Yeah, we're good. How we're is good. Victoria doing? That's the question. She's okay. She's yeah, okay. She's okay. This is Reading Aid Station. We're well ahead of cutoff here, an hour and a half ahead of cutoff at Reading. It is midnight, just about midnight, and um, we're just going to get a quick drink here. We, we're not going to spend a lot of time here. Now, the thing about the headphones is I am going to put them on charge. They haven't died, but I think a good place, a good time now is to charge them. I packed the Oladance earphones in the charging case and put them away for the next couple of hours. It was another 10 miles from Reading to the next stop and once past the tarmac of the town, the path heads into the woods. There's a lot more single track and as a result of the rain, much of it had become particularly muddy. You tend to slow down in the dark anyway, but the mud was making forward progress even more arduous. Right, we're at Pangbourne Aid Station at uh, 
some miles into the Thames Path. One, oh yeah, 66.6, .6, isn't it? The, the number of the beast. And it is a bit of a beast. We are, oh yeah. So now, officially Victoria's longest run. How are you? Everything hurts, thank you. It's absolutely hideous. Why did I think this was a good idea? There was no let up in the mud throughout the night and into the next morning. Even in good conditions, we'd be tired and slowing by now. We'd kissed goodbye to the 24 hour goal some time before, and we were now beginning to worry about the cut off at the finish line. Good morning. It is quarter to 6 a.m. on Sunday morning, and we have had one heck of a night with the mud. Victoria has fallen over. I fell over earlier on. I've charged my Ola Dan's headphones. So Victoria's headphones are not working anymore, but that was way past, it's way past 16 hours. Um, I think she's just too tired to put them in the charger. The state of play is this. We have 36 kilometers to go. We have just over seven hours to do that in. Now that might seem like a lot, but the way we are feeling right now, trashed legs, horrendous in the mud. You may have seen a bit of video of the mud that we've been running through. Um, it is gonna be very tight. The cutoff for this race is 28 hours. So we've got a job on now to get Victoria to the finish line within the cutoff. It was now a race against time. The funny thing was that it was supposed to be me pacing Victoria, but more often than not, during a walking break, it would be Victoria who would start running first and be ahead of me. She would leave the aid stations before me and I could see a steely determination in her face to get the job done no matter what. There was no time now to enjoy the scenery, no time to sit down. Although we were passing quite a few other runners, we were still effectively at the back because many of those other runners were moving too slowly and weren't going to make it. We are about 14 miles from home. We are still pushing to get Victoria to the finish line in under 28 hours. Under the cutoff, it's still going to be tight. If you've enjoyed watching this video and you're ready for the big climax, then please subscribe to the Film My Run channel. Click that notifications bell. I am really tired, but I'm so determined to get to the end. We knew we had to run, but we were exhausted. Field after field eventually brought us to the penultimate aid station. So this is Clifton Hamden aid station where I DNF'd on my first attempt at uh, the Thames Path 100. We stayed only briefly at Clifton Hamden. We had to keep moving or my attempt at the Centurion Grand Slam would be over before it began and Victoria's first 100 mile race would end in disappointment. Everything hurts and I'm really not enjoying this. It's the most horrendous thing I've ever done. And there's about 50 million times more mud on this route than there was at UTS 50K last year. So a ringing endorsement for the Thames Path 100 with just 13K to go. And this is Abingdon behind us. Even in those final few miles, the mud simply would not give us a break. It was relentless and frustrating, but Victoria would not give up. Final aid station on the way home. Um, I would love to eat food, but I just, I think we'd better get on and just go, hadn't we? You'll notice there's no sign of Victoria here. She's already on her way. She was running stronger than me now. Approaching the last four kilometers of the Thames Path 100, Victoria and I are so shattered. 
we can hardly move but it is still tight to get Victoria in on her first 100 miler inside the cutoff so we are moving as fast as we can how are you feeling Victoria absolutely wrecked everything hurts <laughs> I want to get to that finish line. I want that buckle. With three kilometres to go, the path finally became a little easier and we gave it one last push. We passed a couple more runners as we crawled ever closer to Oxford. And eventually, after nearly 28 hours on the Thames path, we turned the final corner. So here we are, coming up to the finish of the Thames path, 100. Victoria's first 100 mile race. Thank you to all the dance for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And here we go, about to cross the finish line. Crossing the finish line of a 100 mile race is a unique experience and I felt an overwhelming sense of pride in Victoria's achievement. She is blessed with an unshakable drive and determination which has seen her complete the Paris, Boston and London marathons and now her first 100 mile race all in less than six weeks and she is my absolute hero. Did it. Huge thanks once again to Ola Dance for sponsoring this video. Please click the affiliate link in the description to buy their very impressive wireless earphones. That's how to finish a 100 miler just inside the cutoff. We made it. So proud of Victoria, she did incredibly well. We started at a slow pace and uh, we gradually just kept moving through the field because the weather conditions just put paid to a lot of people's races. 40% DNF rate for the Thames Path and that is unheard of for this race. But Victoria and I made it to the end. So I'm very, very proud of that and uh, that's it that's it we'll see you for the next one uh the next adventure the next marathon the next ultra we'll see you on the start line bye bye